Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? Hope you're keeping well. Hope life's treating you well at the minute. I know there's um, quite a few challenges at the minute, so um, it's nice that we can get together and have another crafty catch up. Now, we've got a new theme on our Lavinia website for our challenge. So if you're new to Lavinia, and it's lovely that we have got so many new followers. Um, so we have a theme every month and you design a, a, a card or a project um, along with that theme and the winner is chosen at random so that's fabulous and you can win £40 to spend on the website um, on, on Lavinia stamps and again I mean just think what you can buy with that those stamps that you've got on that wish list maybe some of the new ones so the new theme this month is Blue Aura and you can interpret that however you want so I thought for a change I'd use some underwater stamps because I am aware that recently I've used a lot of our new stamps which is great because obviously you get new goodies and you want to play but I know not everybody can take delivery of these new stamps straight away you know it could be funds it could be maybe they take a while to get to you so a couple of our lovely followers have asked if I can use some of our older stamps which again is important because you know we don't want to fall out of love with them just because they've been in the box a while so it's nice to go through your stamps and maybe find some stamps that you haven't used for a while. So I thought my obvious thing for Blue Aura was a fairy and um, something sort of along those lines. And I stopped myself and thought, no, let's go underwater and let's interpret it that way. So anyway, this is what I came up with. And I thought we'd have a go at creating this. And it's nice because I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of shimmer under this water as well. So I'm going to start with a piece of 7x7, seven seven, so that's an inch, 7x7 seven seven multifarious cardstock. And I do find I have a right and a wrong side with this, I don't know why, again that's just in my head. And I'm going to use some oxides. And what I did was I looked through my blues and I've gone for some colour, so I've gone for speckled egg and I like to put them on my matte in the order I'm going to use them. So speckled egg, stormy sky, then going down my colours, mermaid lagoon, and then bringing in my deeper one, the prize ribbon. I think I may just be running out of room there. And I've got some of my Lavinia little blending sponges. So, and again, it doesn't matter what you use for this. If you want to use brushes, your blending tools, your sponges, whichever you're happy with now I've got to I have a bit of a thing about which goes with which and I think that's roughly in the right order and I'm going to start just by blending my background to start off with and I'm going to use a couple of our circle masks and I want my blue aura to start about there I want it off center I have a thing about things being off center and I'm going to come in with my lightest of the colors and I'm just going to add some blue in this. And again, I'm not being particularly careful. What I want to show you with this background is sometimes I think we're a bit over precious with our blending. I know I constantly get messages and emails, which is lovely, thank you. But by crafters asking about blending and you know the tricks and tips to good blending and sometimes I think it's nice to make something and just show that if your blending isn't perfect actually you can get away with it you see I've got my excuse ready there in case my blending isn't perfect today <laughs> so I'm just going to wipe the mask because again it's important just to wipe things and put them away as we use them so that's going back in my container there and I'm going to bring in the actual circle that covers that, almost to protect that, because I'm going to come in with my next colour. And I'm working down from light to dark. And I'm just going to flick out and then blend around. It's quite good, you get used to holding with one hand and then almost blending with the other in even inking up look. And there will be a bit of a almost like a white line between the two and I like that I'm almost going to use that I did wonder at first whether to get rid of that to just blend it out because I could at this point look 
bring my ink in but I quite like if I bring the finished one I quite like to actually use that as part of the design so I thought that was quite nice that and again if I want to just go a little bit further out and again just wipe that circle mask and pop it away it's so good to get in these good habits less chance of losing it you know what we're like when these things disappear so i'm going to come into my next color now this is quite a, a change of color but don't again don't worry and i'm just going to start blending off the page here and coming round and like I say, I don't want you to get hung up that we've got marks on here. Turn the card and just keep going round. Now again, just to show if you wanted at this point, and I have got a very old blending tool here. Look at this bits of the foam keep falling off. But again, I want to show you that even if you use an old piece like this look and this I know will give me lines but I want to show you how it doesn't matter look we've got lines there where bits of the foam have come off it's almost scratching really this should be um, filed in the bin but I want to show you that it doesn't matter so circular motions all the way around and then what I would do is come in with the lighter colour and just blend it a little bit over so that gap, so those two colours blend a bit better. So that's not as obvious. Now you can use your brushes for this, but for me the brushes almost have a lighter touch. Um, and it would take me longer to build this depth of colour. I want quite a deep colour, so that's the reason I'm not using my brushes. Then I'm going to come in with my darkest of the colours and again I'm going to start in this corner and all the time I'm, I'm being mindful I've got my hand on my kitchen towel and this dark colour is just to frame it and again it's all blues to go with my theme of my blue aura. Now you could obviously have started with your darker colour in the middle and add a darker aura but for me because I want to stamp the fish I just didn't think he would show up as well. He's got so much lovely detail I thought if it's too dark ink underneath so that's why I've gone light to dark but obviously depending if you were stamping a silhouette you could get away with darker in the middle. I mean it's all part of sometimes i mean sometimes you can make backgrounds and leave them to one side and stamp them up at a later date but for this because i knew which stamps i wanted to use it just gave me that idea of, of how to work my colors now it's a bit patchy here so again just bear with me and then i'm going to come in again with this color just to blend over those edges and again, I mean, that blending's okay. It's not perfect. As I say, there are a few lines, a few darker and lighter, but I'm happy with that. <sighs> it's going to give it a bit of a gentle wipe. I don't want to use my hands, just where the bits off that sponge were, were coming. So I'm going to put the lids on my ink pads just for the minute. Just because I am going to use them again, but as always, I'm running out of space. You know what that's like, don't you? <laughs> and let's just clean this up. The beauty of these mats, they clean up beautifully, but it's important. We want them nice and clean. And let's get on to our stamping. So I'm just going to bring my copy of paper in. You know what I'm like. And again, as I always say, you know, there's no definite rules for things you must do with your stamping. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. And I've said this before, I'm not the world's best at stamping. In fact, I struggled with stamping for many years and I've just come up with ways of it helping me and the copy of paper is one of those ways. Not right for everybody, but you find whatever suits you and don't be afraid of trying something, you know. Now I'm going to come in with our fish stamp 
and we've got two lovely little fish off the fish set and also we've got this gorgeous chap and I do believe he is Flo and there's two there's our Ario and Flo I'm going to stamp him in black well I say him I don't know could it be male could it be female do fish have definite I assume so I think it's worms that are um, hermaphrodites, isn't it? But there we go, that's something you can look up. But I'm not quite sure what type of fish it is. <laughs> I could say it's an underwater fish. And you have to say, we have two goldfish. The grandchildren were told by um, Adam and Danielle, the parents, that they could have goldfish, but only if they kept them at grandma's. So hence, we have two goldfish. But when they were asked what they wanted to name them we've got batman and we've got spider-man not the usual names for goldfish but the boys chose them and yes spider-man has got red on him and batman's mainly black and white so <laughs> i do know which is which so i'm going to stamp flow in the middle there in the middle of this blue aura almost looks like a big bubble that is just bursting out of and again for me I need to just put you know again I'm not somebody who can stamp down and straight up I do need to press a few times but that's just the way I do it it works for me and again just lift the block and you get a beautiful stamped image don't ever be frightened of the way you stamp everybody stamps differently and as long as you get good results please you go with that so give my stamp a quick wipe and put him back on his acetate. And then we'll come in with this one off the fish set. And it's lovely that they swim in the same way. And you know fish do that sort of in a bit of a bit of a shoal. So I'm thinking we'll have one up here. Oh, lovely. And I love this because we've got stripes and then we've got... I like the circles on him or her. I think I might put this one down here. In the original, I had it up there. But I'm just going to change it up a bit. I do that. I've told you I'm like that. I have difficulty doing exactly the same thing twice. But sometimes I think it's nice. I mean, when I do batch card making, even then, I do things a bit differently. And what we're going to do now is come in with a little bit of, um, I think this one's Sea Tangle. And I'm going to use a blue for this. And I've got this gorgeous, I've got Twilight, but I think it was this one I used. Blue Bell. So, and I just thought blue on blue. And again, I'm going to start at this side because then I have less chance of smudging and work my way towards me. So if I just, just alter the height. So I want this to look quite natural. So and I've just caught the end there, so I'm just going to wipe that. And I'm just going to alter, oh, we'll have that there. And then let's have a second generation there. And I love this because it almost, you can see the movement. That one, that one. And again, a little bit like when we're planting our garden up. I don't want it to look too contrived. I want it to look quite natural. So we'll have a bit of a gap there. And then, and I think I'll have a tall one coming off the edge. I do love to stamp off the edge let's get that there beautiful colour this do love to use different colours of Versafine and I think that can you see just works really well and again let's give the stamper a wipe and dry that I'm going to put that to one side and then that's nearly all our stamping done. What I do want to just stamp is some little bubbles. Now, there is a gorgeous bubbles stamp and it's quite long. And I've got to be honest, please, 
don't, don't watch this bit, Tracy. I've cut mine. I've cut a little bit off mine because I just love these few here. I could have just masked off, but I like to use this. I use this so many times just as this shape. So, as I say, it's off the larger. You can use the larger, the full one, if you want. Just for me, I like just this combination here. And I'm just altering the way I just want to get some lovely bubbles up here. And then I'm just going to put a couple here. I'm not going to put those all the way up. And let's alternate this one and put these going that way. If I turn it round, there you go. So we'll give that a quick, quick blot, just to check that that Versafine Claire is dry. Because we don't want to, we don't want to smudge it, do we? And you know me, belt and braces. Let's just do a quick. And then just to add, I mean, I like it as it is, but I want to add a little bit more interest to the background. So I'm going to come in with my stencil and this one's coral, which obviously works perfectly with an underwater design. And I'm going to get the prize ribbon, my deepest of the colours. And this is where my stencil brush comes in. Now, the other day we had a question in our group and it was a lady, one of our new crafters, and she was asking with stencils, how do you know which way, if I just turn this over, which way to brush? So you always go the way of the stencil, so I'm going to brush this way. If I come this way, look, I may just catch and just it would damage my stencil. So the stencil tends to show you, so brushing the way that the stencil goes. And always be mindful of these straight edges. Use the middle bits if you can. If not, just be mindful of that. You don't want that edge. So let's have a look. So we'll start. Let's have a look at this side here. Now, obviously, I can see my stamping through. So I know I don't want to go over the fish. And you can always lift your stencil up, look, to see. And I just be mindful, I just want this shape in the distance, almost so it's sort of, well, I was going to say underwater, just to sort of enhance that underwater sort of corally ripples. And obviously, when you put in the darker ink over the lighter, it will show up more. And this, because it's at the bottom, so it's my darker ink going over towards the darker. I'm being a bit more mindful to be a bit heavier, a bit heavier handed. And then I'll get lighter as I come nearer the top. Yeah, that's looking lovely. If I just bring that up, can you see? And we're just getting that lovely effect in the background. So I'll have a bit more over here. And again, you can move it round, look. So I like that bit there. And again, I'm actually coming straight in from my ink pad because again, it's going over that darker blue in the side. So a little bit there. And I'm just gonna work my way around and just take your time. Just adding. So a little bit more in this corner. And again, I can be quite heavy handed there because I'm going over that dark blue color. Yeah. So I'm very happy with that. I think that's lovely. Now, remember, the stencil, that's got blue ink on it, hasn't it? So we've got a spare piece of card. So be mindful. Sorry, Eric. I'm just going to spritz it with water. And again, Eric's fast asleep on the side there. So he got a bit of a shower then. But being a Labrador, he's happy with that. And thank you to the lady the other day who asked me how he is. He's, he's doing very well, thank you. Having lots of lovely dog walks at the minute. And he likes it when I go and have my coffee in the garden because he comes and sits with me. So let's have a look at cleaning our stencil. 
there we go and I don't mind about that I'm happy with that and when that dries look I'll just flick some extra blue around there and that's going to give me a lovely background for putting more fish so we'll put that there we'll put the stencil over there now it's dry so what I do want to do put my brush back want to add a little bit more here for bleaching so what I'll do is first of all come in with my fan brush which is in my water pot and I'm even on top of that stenciling because I want that combination of the stenciling and the water splats so that's the first thing I'm going to do we'll add that and also I want to take a little bit of the colour out just for these bubbles so I'm going to come in with my number one I think this one is of my lovely Lavinia paint brushes and I'm just going to paint add some water into the bubbles here and just start a bit of faux bleaching and again you will take your time doing this and this is where you're just going to aggravate my husband says I'm very good at that <laughs> aggravate this ink and then dab and as you dab the faux bleaching you can see it will become paler and we'll do these over here as well and obviously the darker the ink almost the better results you get the easier it looks to faux bleach And again, this works because the Distress Oxide we've used is a dye-based ink, so it's not permanent, it moves with water. Now you could do this with your Element Sinks because they're dye-based as well. Right, I'm going to stop there, but as I say, you could take longer and take out more, but you can see it's a lot paler. And once again, we'll just run the heat tool over. And look at those lovely water splats. Again, always important to dry from the back. That'll help keep your card nice and flat. So I think we'll add a little bit of colour just down here. And for this... We're going to use our pan pastel pencils. Sorry, chalk pastel pencils. <laughs> I think I've just renamed them there, don't you? So let's have a look. And again, I'm going to use a couple of different blues. And I'm also going to use a little cotton bud. This is a biodegradable cotton bud. Now, there's lots of ways you could paint some colour in if you wanted. I just love the way the chalk pastel, because almost I want to be able to see through. I don't want a, a thick, almost layer of colour. I want it to be quite wispy. You know how things look when they're underwater. And again, I could use my pencil to blend, but I'm just using this instead of a little blending stump. And also it will blend the pastel, but also fix it. So I think we'll have a couple in this lovely colour. And I always say this, but you will take a lot longer and really make this beautiful. I think we'll have this tall one here in this colour. It's a lovely stamp, this. And obviously you don't just have to use it underwater. You could use it with your florals. And it looks great stamped. As though you can use the edge as though it's coming up very very useful stamp so let's blend and I love the way that the pastel pencils go quite smudgy and after all we are underwater aren't we so let's come in with a green just to break that blue up 
and I like this green. What's this one? Permanent green deep. And this is, I say with it being a deep green, it's almost like, you know, when you get the water, the sea, the ocean, that's sort of a, a bluey. I'm just going to turn my, with these having two ends, perfect. So one for my blue, one for my green. And I just like that combination look. So we'll have another green one over here. Check it's the green end. And then I think we'll come in with a lighter blue. It's almost a, it says sky blue, but it's almost a sort of a, a purpley. Go back to the blue end. Oh yes, I like this light colour. Let's just do this one here. It's a lovely way of adding colour, this. And you don't have to be an absolute perfect colourist. Now, if I bring that a little bit closer, can you see? As I say, you'll spend a little bit longer, but look at the beautiful... I mean, they almost look like underwater colours, don't they? And that's exactly what we want with that. We want it to blend in, but I didn't want it to look too see-through. So we'll add some colour to our fish now. I'm just going to put my pastel pencils out of the way. I don't want to knock those. And we'll come in with our gel pens for this. And let's have a look. Let's go with this lovely green. Now, you can use any of your, your pens, your glitters, but I just think it's almost one of those neon tetras, although I think they're probably quite small fish, if my memory serves me correct, but you do get lovely bright underwater fish, don't you? Well, you have on my card anyway. <laughs> and again, it's nice to just colour in. Tracy's done all that beautiful detail for you. And he's just gorgeous. So let's give him his eye. And then he's got luscious lips, look. Let's give him his lips. And then what I'll actually do is I've let's get a green of the, the pastel. And let's just add some green to his tail, to his fins. And then once again, blend it in. And that'll, again, just give that, because some of them are almost quite um, transparent, aren't they? And then I can come in and add a little bit of glitter with the gel pen just in the areas that I want. And I'm not overcooking it then by having to fill the whole of the area. And I just think that gives a better effect and almost looks more believable. So let's add some blue to this one here. Now again, you will spend longer. You could colour each one. You could colour in different colours. You could add lots of... And this is a great card for a man. And if that was the case and you didn't want to add a lot of your gel pens, you could use other colouring medium. You've got pencils. You could paint the colours in using your ink and water. But I'm quickly just going to add a bit of blue. Again, we often get struck for men's cards, don't we? So this would be a lovely design. So if we go and work on these lovely bubbles now, I'm just going to add a few little dots in this bottom right hand corner. I just want to make them, almost give them a bit more depth. And this is just my way of making them look that they've got a bit more, bit more depth. 
Now again, however you choose to, to add yours, that's fine. Again, there's no right and wrong. And I'm just going to add some little white highlights. And again, I'm being mindful just to lean on my kitchen towel. Now this is just my white gel pen. Now you could put glossy accents on the top here. The only reason I have done haven't done that is it does take a while to dry. And I wanted to do my video to show you. But I may add glossy accents and then, and then just leave it. But they are lovely, but they do take a while to dry. So I think they look much. You could use your white pastel pencil if you wanted and colour the whole thing. I just like that, almost that 3D look. And it's good to show you different ways of doing things, isn't it? So I think that's building up lovely. Now, I could go around with a grey, but I'm thinking I'm going to mat it onto my black card and that will be bring the colour. I want to have as much blue as I can for my blue aura. So what I think I'll do is just add a little finishing touch and bring in this white, this fine pearl medium of the pan pastel. As you know, I adore this. And what we'll do with this, with the applicator look, we'll just add around our aura here. And again, I use my finger just to blend the pastel and to fix it. And then I'm going to come in and just add another sort of circle here, almost like the ripples. You know what they're like, they're sort of fanning the way out. And I'm not being over precious, just doing a sort of a type of shape look. Just to give that idea that we've got those ripples. And actually, let's take it across the fish there so it looks like he's swimming through. And you can extend that as far as you want. Just going to add a little bit more in there. And then just to go around, I'm just going to scrape off a little bit of pastel look onto my mat. And then put the lid on. Again, keep those good housekeeping, put that to one side. And just get my fan brush again. And then let's just add some more water flakes, but with this. Because this, with it being pearl, will give such a lovely, it'll add a little bit more full bleaching. And it'll give such a lovely, lovely pearl effect as it dries. And it all makes it look more, sort of, you've got that underwater effect. But what I do want to just do is wipe that off my mat, just some water on a cloth and then in with my inky binky. Now, if I show you, as that dries, you will get a lovely, lovely glisten. And I'm hoping you can see it actually looks like it is underwater. Now, on my finished design, what I've done is where the pearls have dried, I've just added with my, my white Sidno pen, just added some little dots into the centre of where those full bleaching areas are, just to help make the whole design pop. Now, obviously, I won't do it to this one because I just want it to dry. But that's the only difference. So if I just put some black under this one so you can see and pop that one there. And then we bring this one in. Move my pens out the way. I think we can just about get them side by side so as I say the only thing I've done here is added those little white dots when this is dry so I'm hoping you've enjoyed that and I'm hoping those ladies I know a couple of ladies recently have asked for underwater designs so I'm hoping this gives you an idea of what what you can do um, and please enter the challenge as I say just go along to the Lavinia website all the details are there 
and um, you know who knows it could be you winning the 40 pound wouldn't that be lovely if you left me a message on here at the end of the month saying thanks joe i entered and guess what i've won 40 pound and then you can tell me what stamps you're going to get i must admit I was thinking the other day, what would I? And I was thinking, what are my favourite ones? And mind you, my favourite ones change every week. I don't know about you. Anyway, I'd better go. <laughs> Jobs to do. So it's been lovely spending time with you. Thank you as always for all your comments. Honestly, you know, you, the fact that you subscribe and the fact that you take time to leave comments, I really appreciate it, as do the rest of the team. Honestly, thank you very much. It's such a lovely family on here. So you take care, have a good week, and I'll see you again next Tuesday. Stay safe. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.